Welcome to Gary Lamb Main Event Media Post Game Live. Niners defeat the Steelers with another 30 point performance by Brock Purdy and the 49ers. 30 to 7. Let's get rolling. The first thing you learned Brock Purdy is back. And if there was any doubt, he's better than Kenny Pickett. Brock Purdy looked fantastic. The stats, they're, they're, they're what they are. 220 yards, um, two touchdowns, no picks, a couple of fumbles, and one loss. Um, we'll go into that later. Brock Purdy looked good. The offense was in rhythm. Christian McCaffrey, big game, 151. Uh, a big 65-yard touchdown. Uh, three catches, fine. Ayuk, everything you thought he was going to do, he did. Big talk about him being ready for this season as he always is. Eight catches, 129 yards, looking like the number one receiver with two touchdowns. Said the Niners going to have 30 a game. It was going to be tough against Pittsburgh. Brock Purdy, definitely better than Kenny Pickett. He is moving up the ladder in the quarterback rankings. But here we go. We got to go negative. We got to go what needs to improve right off the bat. First of all, Christian McCaffrey, fantastic, but 22 carries is way too much. 10 minutes in, uh, into the fourth quarter, 49ers and a blowout. What's he even touching the ball for? They finally took him out with 8 minutes, 30 seconds to go. He didn't need 22. I would have been happy with 14 or 16. We have Elijah Mitchell. We have um, J.P. Jordan. We don't need this. We, we, he already did his damage. You know, Arguably, he could have been out essentially after that uh, big 65-yard touchdown run. The Steelers, I mean, they, they're a tough team. They played all their players in the preseason. Kenny Pickett looked great until he met the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan has a history of overrunning running backs. Raheem Mostert. Um, everybody. Elijah Mitchell himself. So we got we to gotta think about this, Kyle. We get, why, why have backups? I mean, Elijah Mitchell dropped the ball. I know, of course you want to have McCaffrey in there. But the game was out of hand. What are you looking to do? All right. We're going to stay on offense. The other thing. Brock Purdy, back to him. Tremendous touch passes. I think the most impressive pass when he threw um, Brandon Ayuk open. You have to know how to use your skill players' talents. Ayuk wasn't open, but he knows how to fight for the ball. Um, he threw it back shoulder. Ayuk made the play. He put the ball... Brock Purdy put the ball in a position where his big his big player, the big main player, maybe the best receiver on the team, can make a play. Ayuk did it. That is great stuff. Um, I just want to shout out to Debo. Um, he is better at fighting for the ball, going up for it than people think. This is a good receiving core. I like I like the strategy of getting the ball to Debo early. Getting that uh, that secondary banged up, and then uh, then Nayuk just play like a receiver. Here's the two things that are challenging with Brock Purdy. Number one, when the 49ers are in third and about you know ten or eleven, let's say we'll say twelve, it's hard for the 49ers offense to complete a you know that 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 mid range. Um, 10 yard play where Brock just has to get it out quick and fire it when all the pass rush is on him. He often has to rely on buying time to get receivers open. But here's the good news Brock Purdy can move, and the 49ers have the kind of players Kittle, Debo, Ayuk, Yushek, McCaffrey that can make plays 
behind the yard to gain, behind the first down marker, and move up. And that's what the 49ers are going to have to rely on because that is the one thing that Brock Purdy, it's just that's, that's not his strength. The 49ers can also overcome that by not having penalties, by not losing yards. Um, and they are really good at that. So, uh, And there was also a time on third and long late in the game, about, I think it was third and 12, where Brock uh, made the first down on his legs. I'm tired of people saying Brock Purdy is a sneaky athlete. This guy is not sneaky. We should, you should know this. If you don't know, Brock Purdy can wheel, he has burst, he has a, he has a little shift in him, then there's a problem, okay? You have to know by now, if you're a defensive coordinator, that Brock Purdy has wheels. If you don't get that by now, he's not a sneaky athlete. He's just a good athlete. He know he has a feel for the running game. Um, he knows He knows when to make a move. Then it's your problem. But here's the real thing that could be a challenge for the 49ers offense. Um, the the matchup that scared me was Colton McKivitz um, and T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt, yeah, he has an all-time single-season sack record, and he had three sacks against the 49ers. He forced two fumbles, um, and and one the Steelers recovered. I don't care who you are. If your quarterback is getting hit, I don't care how good your your skill players are. Um, this is dangerous. You don't. There's a you. You don't want your quarterback in a thirty to seven blowout where you're on top, taking that many hits and getting sacked. Too many scares with that elbow. Too many scares with that. You know, with with the arm. Uh, Brock Purdy's arm uh, held up good. Um, he's smart. He protects himself when he's running the ball. Uh, like I mentioned before. A third and long uh, in the fourth quarter. Brock Purdy got the yards to gain. He got down. Fine. But there's only so much you could do. And he so many plays just reminded me where Brock's dropping back, uh, you know, in passing downs. And just a lot of... Everyone's coming for that elbow. Everyone's coming for it. TJ Watt came for it. He got him three times, including a couple sacks and a forced fumble. Too many scares in a blowout game like this where your running back ran for like 160 yards. Okay. And I'm going to give Colton McKivitz, you know, s some leeway. This was the scariest matchup I saw. Uh, I didn't look forward to this matchup, the TJ Watt versus Colton McKivitz matchup. I don't like it. I didn't like it then. And it, and it worked out the way I thought it would. Thank God Brock is okay, but you can't have a season like this. If I'm a defensive coordinator, I would always put my number one edge rusher over McKivitz. I would why test Trent Williams, who had a who had a injury scare today. Keep that in mind, for uh, United Faithful. Let's hope and pray. That Trent Williams is okay. Uh, he came out of the game for a couple of plays. Um, I don't love the 49ers backup tackles right now. Uh, I hope Jalen Moore could challenge McKivitz for that right tackle. He just didn't cut the mustard. And more or less being a left tackle. But I don't see any reason why you shouldn't line up your best pass rusher um, on Brock Purdy's throwing arm side. I mean, I'm surprised it's not in Brock's head. Uh, Brock, Brock is mentally tough. I'm surprised it's not in his head because so many times the, the ball's tipped uh, with the defender coming right here. They've they got to be coming for it. You got you, the, the defender's got to be coming for that arm. they got to be coming for that arm right here. And Cole McCovett, Kivitz didn't cut the mustard. I don't see any reason, again, why you shouldn't line up your best edge rusher over McKivitz and let him get to Brock. And Brock, one thing Brock doesn't too because he's short. Brock sometimes gets back. It's, it's, instead of getting, instead of stepping up where the, uh, where McKivitz can push him behind him, Brock kind of backs up and he, in the, uh, leading, leading him right into the pass rush. So those two things that don't, that, that, that's, that's going to lead to something bad happening, like happened in, uh, in Philadelphia, because, you know, 
what you what you want to do, you want to be able to the line want to push him behind the recorder back who needs to step up. But Brock, Brock kind of steps back. It's a bad combination, especially when you got your elbow rebuilt. Okay? Hey, it didn't happen today. Thank God. Um But Brock has to adjust and get down because what Brock likes to do is get back and get out this way, especially to the left. Right? Because Brock, Brock likes to get here and whoop and get out that way. But you're getting back, you're right back into your you know, you're gonna be back on the uh Injured reserve. If you're here, you know you get you get your uh, you get your arm busted up. So that's those are two things that bust up the season. McKivitt, uh not cutting the mustard. Um, and rushing McCaffrey too many times when it's not necessary. I think McCaffrey. McCaffrey's uh, problem could be solved easily. Just, I know, you know, Elijah Mitchell dropped the ball today, but he needs, you know, to to get in the rhythm of the games, especially in a blowout, uh, un unnecessary, and getting that many hits on your quarterback in a blowout unnecessary. So we got to use our head over here. Uh, I don't, I don't know if there's an answer at right tackle. Um, it could just be T.J. White, a great game. We'll see next week, but there's no reason to challenge Trent Williams on on the blind side when the weakness is the elbow in that position coming from the defensive uh, defensive left of quarterbacks right, um, and a you know you got one guy making this much money, you got Colt McKivitz on the other side. I, I would I would just I would attack Colt McKivitz. All right, to the defense. I want to be too negative. Defense. Stop the run. Fantastic. Five sacks. Three from Jake Jackson. Um, Nick Bosa played a lot of plays. Uh, he didn't get injured. Great. Didn't do much else. But uh, the defense was inspired. Um, they had a little lapse at the end of the first half. But the Steelers are a team full of pride. Um, like I said, they shut down the run. Hargrave got a sack in the end. That pass rush was looking good. Um Excellent job of the defense. Here, here's what the the 49ers defense is missing. Well, I know if there if there is a negative. For the last few years, the 49er nickelback has been a weapon, especially uh, in the pass rush. Uh, when you're talking Jimmy Ward, he, he he could Jimmy Ward could stop any tight end. K1 Williams was very similar. I, I, he he couldn't guard a uh, tight end as well as Jimmy Ward. But right now, it's a question mark. When I see the nickelback. I'm just gonna say the third, uh, the third corner. Lenore made made a couple of bonehead plays with some personal fouls. Um, toward the you know toward the end of the game, he didn't do that, but he's tough. I I trust him in the run game. Um, Mooney Ward had a pick. Uh, he played hurt. That's important. You need guys to play. So okay, I, I'm 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 good with those guys. But whoever the third guy is, if it's Ambry Thomas, I didn't even see the other dude, the other free agent. I can't even remember his name. But um, I don't, I don't see that that Nickelback or the third corner is a weapon like it was in previous years. That's the only, uh, that's the only uh, critique I have on the defense. Otherwise, great job, especially stopping the run, creating turnovers. Excellent job. Defense came to play, and they sh they showed. I mean. They help prove that Brock Purdy better than Kenny Pickett. Again, every game Brock Purdy plays, he steps a notch up in the quarterback rankings. A lot thanks to that defense. All right, special teams. Excellent job. Um, starting off, I'm just going to start with Ray Ray McLeod. Great job showing up. I'm not sure if his wrist is totally healed. He'll be out eight weeks for his hand. But the main thing, no turnovers. I love that. There was a play where it looked like the uh, a punt bounced off a 49er player or got close to it. Um, Raven McLeod stayed cool, returned the ball, no turnovers, felt real safe. You don't want to turn the ball over when you got a great offense, a great defense. You don't want to ruin on special teams. Jake Moody. Three kicks, nothing special. The Niners didn't try to make him kick a 70-yarder. 
you wish they probably did in the preseason. Just let the kid get ease into the game. Three field goals, three for three, all you can ask for, perfect. Um, Mitch Wisnowski, this may be the best game I've ever seen him play. Three punts. All inside the 10, all inside the 5, all fantastic. He did not have a good preseason, um, but he was fantastic against the Steelers, helping the Niners um, back up the Steelers against that defense. Phenomenal job. Very, very pleased with the special teams. Very encouraging. You can't ask for anything else. Um, which Nowski asked, you know, the, Ste the Steelers were going after Moody after those, you know, after a shaky preseason. You can uh, evidence by that what that the whole te the whole side of the defense going offsides to block the kick, to block a field goal. Um, but Moody had his head on a swivel. He almost gained a first down after the a block kick. Uh, I'm talking about Wisna uh, Mitch Wisnowski. So he so Wisnowski looking a lot better than preseason. So is Moody. That's doing a lot to ease my mind. We got back Ray Ray. Who's probably playing hurt right now? Um, has a probably has a messed up hand. It's supposed to be eight weeks. He's back, so this isn't good for the 49ers. Overall, weapons look fantastic. Great job for Kittle just showing up. Great job Debo just showing up. Drake Jackson three sacks. He's going to be the other side of Bosa. We'll see how Bosa plays the next week. He's probably going to be a little bit higher. I see Ray Ray McLeod right now with his hair. So happy to see that that Ray Ray McLeod hair. And more happy to see his hands holding on to the punts and not dropping them like the rookies did. Okay, I I read, I love I love that veteran presence. I love what he brings to the team. Great job, happy to be he's there. But I'm gonna get out of here. Everything looks great. The ways we can blow it right now. Nickelback, not a force. Um, when I say Nickelback, whoever's going to be—I know Lenore is going to go in and out. I could, you know, from from the uh, the uh, the network covered, I couldn't tell who was who was guarding where. But whoever the third the third uh, the third cornerback is going to be, um, we need that guy to step up. But I mean, <laughs> he did fine today. Um, but I I just don't see it as a weapon. Running McCaffrey too much. That needs to change. We don't need in a blowout, 37. We don't need to do that. It's too much risk when you got backups. When you got Elijah Mitchell who never fumbles, uh, and you got uh, you got uh, JP Jordan. We don't need to do that. That's a dumb play. Colton McKivitz, huge question mark. And it's and it's a uh, it's a double whammy over there because this this could cost Brock Purdy to be hurt and he's a similar to Kenny Pickett what separates Brock Purdy from Sam Darnold is what they do when they're under pressure Brock Purdy is a lot better less likely to make a huge mistake and blow it all he looks cooler um, he can overcome mistakes and we don't we don't want to see Sam Darnold. We don't have Trey Lance anymore. The team has confidence in Brock. Brock has confidence. So protecting Brock Purdy and figuring out a way to to block on that right side of the line because there is no way if I am sending everything away from why why even mess with Trent Williams? He's one of the best football players in the history of football. On one side, when you got an unproven Colt McKivitz, you know, which is like, he, he's right there. Like, Colt, he's, he, he's got it right now. It's usually the blind side, but we're protecting Brock's elbow. And if, if Brock does have a flaw, he steps back and he's just waiting. To, he, he steps back and he stays there. You know, he, he's right. He stays in the, in the, in the uh, left defensive end's uh, passing lane, and it's just always set up for this. And we don't want this. We want this. But that's he's still he's just a second year player. So great job, Brock. Um, the numbers don't mean anything. You are better than Kenny Pickett. 
and definitely better than Sam Darnold, so we got to keep him in the game. Gary Lamb made event mania. Post game show. Speaking of shows, Niners put up 30, like I said they would. And I think they will the whole season, as long as Brock Brady's healthy. Can't wait till next week. Gary Lamb, Man Event Mania. God bless you. Keep it real. Keep it clean.